Thanks for listening. This is Brian Hurley from Business Performance Improvement. The podcast, Lean Six Sigma Bursts, are short lessons, comments, Q&A, and insights. If you have a question, send your question through the Anchor app, and we might feature you on a future episode. Or contact me at biz-pi.com. In Lean, we often talk about the seven types of waste. Those are the original wastes that were described by Taichi Ono. Uh, those have expanded to eight types of waste, and then I've seen some lists where it has ten types of waste. I've also seen some lists where they talk about the three M's, Mura, Muri, and Muda. Muda describes those seven or eight types of waste, but I've always struggled to describe what the other two M's relate to those. And To me, they feel like they're other types of inefficiencies or opportunities in an organization or in a process. A couple things I just want to try and simplify this a little bit for people. So if we look at the three M's, which are made up of the seven types of waste plus the Mura, which is like variation in demand or variation in a process or uneven amount of work, or Muri, which is the overburdening or um, overexertion, unreasonable amount of work. Those are all opportunities you can see in a process that are things you could improve to make the process more simplified, streamlined, easier to do. But if you really break down the Muda piece, a friend of mine who is a lean coach, Kale Van Zoen, he and I were trying to simplify this a little bit a couple years ago based on an article we saw where they reduced down the number of waste to really keep it even simpler. They called it stagnation and movement. The stagnation involved things like inventory, waiting, overproduction, extra processing or overprocessing and defects because that's where work has stopped. And so that means it's stagnant or it's stuck in that process. And so you see something that's not moving, you can call that stagnation. Whether you call it exactly inventory or overproduction, does it really matter? And then movement would be things like motion and transportation where something is moving, but it's not necessarily moving for any particular reason. It's not adding value. There's also some other ones that have been added over the years, like skills, where we're not utilizing people's skills to the fullest, and that's a waste or a lost opportunity. Norman Bodick talks about management's resistance to change as another type of waste. I've seen some other lists that talk about confusion or self-doubt as another type of waste. So there's a lot of different options, and it can be overwhelming, and I'm sure people have other types of waste that they've seen on the list or they've considered You might have seen some acronyms like Tim Woods or Downtime or Mr. Toyota or Tim Woody or Worm Pits or Hospital or Closed Mitts or Closed Mitt or Com Whip as other acronyms to remember these types of waste. But most of those are still focused on those seven or eight types of waste. I think Closed Mitts gets a little bit broader view of it. So if we really want to simplify it down and bring in these three M's into this picture, I think you could say uh, Muri for the overburdening or overexertion, Mura for the variation in the process causing unstable work, stagnation, which would cover inventory, waiting, overprocessing defects, etc., and movement as motion and transportation. So you could really cut it, cut it down to about four ways. You might throw in a fifth, like the people side of it, and we're not leveraging people's skills and knowledge to its fullest ability. But that's a little simpler, I think, than talking about the seven types of waste plus eight with the peoples plus the two other M's. Now you're up to 10 wastes. So I don't know what people think about that idea. As a more experienced lean practitioner, it makes sense to me to break it out. But for people just starting off, I think this could be helpful for, for others to adopt and then try to figure out how the three M's kind of connects in with the waste. So curious to see what people's thoughts are around that. Feel free to submit a question through the Anchor app if you have something related to this or if you have a different question you'd like to ask. I'll have a link to the different types of acronyms that I mentioned on our page at the Lean Six Sigma Definition.com site. And if you have some others you've seen, please share them with me and I'll get them added to that site. Thanks. Lean Six Sigma Definition.com has a list of glossary items about popular process improvement terms along with a history of Lean and Six Sigma methods and key influencers like Dr. Edward Stemming, Henry Ford, 
Taichi Ono, Shigeo Shingo, and many more. You can also learn how to access affordable Lean and Six Sigma training and certification. Visit LeanSixSigmaDefinition.com.